Now let's talk about how to replace backgrounds on an image and up until now we've used various masking tools to accomplish what we want to do and we're going to have one more that we're going to look at and that is the background eraser tool and it's kind of a backdoor masking tool because it does establish protection on various portions of the image. So what we're going to do is reduce the size of the brush to about there. Now keep in mind as you know the background eraser tool will erase all colors that come into contact with the crosshatch. Okay, so I'm going to leave this tolerance right now at 10% and then click on this just to show you something. Look on here and as we zoom in on it, you can see that at 10% there's a lot of artifacting in the hair that we really don't want. So what are we going to do to get rid of that? Well, let me show you what the alternative is. We can increase the tolerance to 20% hit it again and you can see that we have a much better result. There's still some residual but not anywhere near as much as we had before. But now if we take this down and we start clicking around the dress we get an undesirable result here okay because blue is very similar to purple and so it's gonna reach over and take some of what you know is comprised of blue in the purple. So we're gonna go back and redo our settings we can do 20% tolerance for the hair and the skin. In fact, we could probably up that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run this up to 30. Ah, much better result on the hair. Let's increase the size. Yeah, I'm liking that a whole lot. And I'll also reduce the artifacting on the arms when you use that high tolerance setting. So... And we don't want to get in the dress. That's the one thing we don't want to do. See, if we get in the dress with this tolerance setting, look what happens. So we're going to avoid the dress with this setting and use it only to eliminate the background around, around the skin. So we're going to come down. Look how clean that is. We don't want to get into the dress come right to it and then we're going to come down keeping the crosshatch in the blue. You don't want to run into the leg. Look what happens. I'm going to just do it and show you what happens. If we run across the leg, see how the leg goes kaflui, so we want to be careful and keep that crosshatch in the blue. Here's the dress. Put it back in. This is looking real good. That 30% setting was just what the doctor ordered. A little bit right here. Yep. Didn't want to do that. All right, that's about as good as it's going to get. So there we have all the selections at that tolerance setting of 20, 30% actually. So let's take it back down to 10 and now we're going to finish, finish up with the dress. So I want to zoom in just a bit here so I can see what I'm doing. And now with that 10% setting, I can come down and get that area around the dress without having any bleed over. Let's enlarge this. See how well that works? Come down. No bleed over at all. Great setting, that 10%. So now we can go back to fit on screen and I can use a larger brush to get rid of the rest of the blue. Let's go ahead and fast forward on this because looking at this is going to put you to sleep. Okay, so now that we've removed the rest of the blue sky, now what's going to happen? Well, we've got this second image up here and let's go ahead and click on it and you can see obviously where we're going with this. I'm going to pull this off the dock and one thing I want to show you before I drag this into Kaylee's picture is the image size. Now this image is sized at 5616 pixels on the long edge. Kaylee's image is sized at 2240. So the background image is considerably larger than the foreground image or the picture of Kaylee. And we want that because I want to be able to move this background image around in order to place Kaylee in the most favorable position. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, left click, drag it over, Go to our Layers palette. Let's go ahead and get a copy of this. We're going to get rid of this mask. 
Now I'm sure you can see where we're going with this. Now I want to be able to move this background around. Now, try as we may to attain perfection, there is still a little bit of blue fringing that you can see. It's not as bad as it could have been. It certainly was not as bad as that first tolerance setting that we used, but it's still there just a little bit. And there's also still some fringing around her legs. So even though we can take microscopically tiny adjustments to this selection, it still looks pretty good. And for our purposes to teach you how to do it, we're going to go ahead and just do it this way. Now we're going to cheat just a bit and put Kaylee's hair in some blue areas of the image just so that we don't make that fringing very evident. And you don't have to put much in here. It doesn't have to go solid blue, but just a little bit of blue to remove the appearance of that fringing. And so I'm thinking that looks pretty good right there. That's actually something I think I'll go ahead and keep. So we're going to come up here and flatten the image and there you have it. That's how to replace a background using the background selection tool in Photoshop CS6.